it's interesting to consider the amount of progress that's been made in identifying genes that contribute to lupus just between the last International Congress in China three years ago and today. Um, uh, it's now become possible, just within the last couple of years, to perform what's called a genome-wide association study, or a GWAS, that involves kind of a comprehensive analysis of the gene of the genome with about up to a million genetic markers to try to figure out which genes are contributing contributing to a disease like lupus. Now, prior to the last couple of years, decades of work trying to understand what genes were contributing to lupus led to the discovery of only a handful. But just in the last couple of years, when it became possible to perform these GWAS studies, there have now been over 30 genes that have been identified that contribute to lupus. And they're telling us several very interesting things about the disease. First of all, many of the genes we've discovered are now clearly relevant to lupus are also appear to be relevant to other autoimmune diseases, and we're learning that from GWAS studies of other autoimmune diseases. And perhaps more importantly, this collection of 30 or so genes uh, are clustered within a few biological pathways um, related to how immune complexes are processed, signal transduction, for example. So the value of that is that it's really telling us what underlying pathways are important for lupus. And that's uh, our handle onto developing better therapies for treating the disease. I guess the other thing I would say about the recent GWAS studies um, is when we look more carefully at the results according to the specific manifestations of the individual patients. So some lupus patients develop kidney disease, others do not. Some lupus patients develop particular rashes, others do not. When we look at the results, considering the specific disease manifestations that are present, we can see that certain genes predispose to certain types of complications of lupus and not to others. So it's really giving us a good feeling for what is causing the different types of disease that are manifest in the patients that we see. It's been observed for decades, really, that family members of a lupus patient are, are more likely to develop the disease themselves, and that was one of the earliest types of evidence for an importance of genes. And, um, but, but clearly, most families, most family members of an affected individual will, will never develop lupus. Now, um, a, a measure of the importance of genes for a disease um, can be estimated by considering the extent to which siblings of a patient are at increased risk of disease compared to their friend who doesn't have a relative with lupus, for example. So this ratio gives you an, an estimate of the overall contribution of genes. Now that number is quite high for lupus. The number is about 30, which is higher than most other autoimmune diseases. Um, rheumatoid arthritis, um, for example, psoriasis. Most other autoimmune diseases have an increased risk of disease among relatives, but not quite to that extent. Um, so this, this was some of the, the early evidence that really supported the importance of genes and, and led investigators to try to pursue these genetic studies, including currently now the, the genome-wide association studies, which have been so really surprisingly successful. There's been a long-standing interest in, in the role of the environment in development of lupus, and as you just mentioned, um, our, our theory has been for a long time that you inherit genetic susceptibility to the disease, but whether or not you develop lupus will be influenced by the factors in the environment that you're exposed to, so exposures, and they could range from a whole variety of things, from drugs, toxins, dietary factors, um, uh, infectious agents, and there's been interesting data implicating those. I think what's very exciting currently is um, awareness, the growing awareness of, of really a new field of study termed epigenetics. That is, we're becoming increasingly aware that, that there are alterations to DNA that are inherited, but that are actually not kind of 
in your DNA code, but rather chemical changes to the DNA. And it turns out that chemicals, diet, can really influence those sorts of modifications to your DNA. Now, what I'm alluding to now is called DNA methylation. And I, I presented a very dramatic example this morning of actually a mouse strain, which um, can look highly variably different depending upon whether the animal is fed a high methyl diet or not. And, and we're discovering that um, DNA methylation, modifications to the DNA, may also be important in lupus. And this could provide that, that link that's been missing between inherited um, genetic variation and factors in the environment and predisposition to lupus and other autoimmune diseases. So lupus has been such a mystery illness for various reasons for so long, and many of the therapies that we have and are still using are very nonspecific in their effects, and with that nonspecificity comes a lot of unwanted side effects and toxicity. Um, so our hope is that by understanding the underlying biology, will be much better able to focus efforts at drug development on, on drugs that are more likely to be effective. But importantly, as we understand the tremendous number of genes and pathways that are relevant to disease, hopefully it will also allow us to individualize therapy in the future. For example, um, some patients' disease may be primarily a result of genetic variation in genes that um, cause abnormal signal transduction. And those patients may respond better to certain drugs of the future than other patients who, whose disease is not due to variation in those sorts of drugs. So it should also help us to individualize therapy. And lastly, looking farther ahead into the future, we can vision a time when, um, for example, it's possible to test a whole number, dozens of genes that are relevant to lupus in an individual who's just exhibiting symptoms to ask the question, number one, what is the likelihood that this really is lupus? And how severe is the disease likely to be? Is this individual likely to have rapidly progressive renal disease or no? So that is, this genetic information is likely to have prognostic or prediction um, value as well. Um, it, 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 it may be a very long time before this information might be useful in a, in a general population, but certainly among individuals who are first developing a disease or close relatives of an infected individual, I think that this, this information is going to be quite useful in the not-too-distant future. Mm -hmm.